All right, we are going to conclude the second article today. We're on the last part, and this is where we're going to talk about how Jesus is our true Savior. The first part of the second article was focused on how Jesus was true man. The second part was how he was also true God. And now we're going to talk about how he is definitely our Savior. Our Bible story today comes from the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And this is the crucifixion and death of Jesus. Roman soldiers made Jesus carry his own cross. Two criminals sentenced to death by crucifixion were forced to do the same. They were led out of the city to be crucified. A large crowd followed, including women who mourned and wailed for Jesus. Jesus was weak from all of his beatings and he fell. The soldiers grabbed a man in the crowd and forced him to carry the cross instead. They led Jesus out of the city to a place called Golgotha, meaning the place of the skull. Jesus and the two criminals were nailed to their crosses. Jesus was in the middle with a criminal on either side. It was nine o'clock in the morning. The soldiers divided Jesus' clothes among them. The inner garment, woven in one piece without seams, was too valuable to divide, so they cast lots for it. It fulfilled the prophecy of Psalm 22:18. They divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. Those who passed by hurled insults at Jesus, shaking their heads and saying, You said you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Come down from the cross and save yourself. Even the chief priests and elders mocked. He saved others, but he cannot save himself. The soldiers also joined in the mocking. One of the criminals joined in with those insulting Jesus. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? We are getting our just punishment. But this man, this man has done nothing wrong. Then he turned and said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. At noon, darkness came over the land until three in the afternoon. At around three in the afternoon, Jesus called out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then Jesus exclaimed, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And with that, he breathed his last breath. The Roman centurion in charge of the crucifixion, who had been watching Jesus die, suddenly praised God and said, Surely this was the Son of God. As evening approached, and the next day was the Sabbath, Pilate gave permission for the legs of those being crucified to be broken so that they would die more quickly. The legs of the two criminals on either side of Jesus were broken. However, as Jesus was already dead, a soldier thrust a spear into his side and blood drained out. It fulfilled the prophecies that not one of his bones will be broken and they will look at the one they have pierced. A good and upright man named Joseph, Joseph, who was a member of the Jewish council, went to Pilate and asked for permission to bury Jesus. Pilate agreed. Joseph took the Jesus body down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and took it to an empty tomb that was cut out of a large rock. A large stone was rolled over the entrance. The Pharisees, aware that Jesus had said, After three days I will rise again, 
asked Pilate to post a guard at the tomb. A severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. The angel's appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards outside of the tomb shook for fear of him and became like dead men. They passed out. They were so scared. On Sunday, the women went to the to Jesus' tomb to bring spices and honor Jesus' body. As they approached the tomb, they wondered how they would get in, but they had found that the stone was already rolled away. As they entered, they saw that Jesus' body was gone. Entering the tomb, the angel told them, Do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who has been crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Behold, here is the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. So here we have heard about Jesus' passion uh, and, and dying on the cross and him rising from the dead. He rose again. The fact that he was true man is why he died on the cross. His ability to um, rise again is proof of true God. And him being a worthy um, substitute for us, he must be true God in order to take the sin of everyone and wear it on his shoulders and die for us. That shows his true God and that he is definitely our savior. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, thank you for giving your life on the cross for us to buy us back for God. Give us grateful hearts as we remember every day that it is only because of your redeeming sacrifice for us that we have forgiveness of sins and eternal life. In your saving name we pray. Amen. All right. So while that is a very hard story to read and hear about, it's absolutely amazing to see or to think about Jesus welcoming um, the criminal on the side who who believed in him and knew he was true God and taking him to paradise with him. Um, we know that Jesus is our savior. If you go into your packet, we're going to conclude the last part of God the Son today by adding Jesus is our savior. And I think it's important that we talk about what the second article actually means. Now, if your parents are following along with the um, the adult Sunday school lessons, they'll probably have already gone over. The second article is kind of longer, but it means that we believe that Jesus Christ is true man and true God, born of the Father, born of the Virgin Mary. He redeemed us. He's He saved us. And they can read that whole description of what the second article means on the catechesis card to you. If you're able to memorize it, that is awesome. I, myself, am still working on memorizing it. But everything we talked about, Jesus being true man, true God, and our Savior is what it's proclaiming. Next week, we will move on to the last article of the Apostles' Creed. I will see you then. Bye.